Joining us now, Dr. Patrick Abbott from San Diego State, uh, Professor Emeritus, thank you for joining us today and uh, expert in these sorts of things. From your analysis thus far, I know this is new news to us and to you, what do you make of tonight's activity? Well, you know, living in California, we expect an earthquake every day. So on the one hand, uh, here, here's one, and at, at a 5.2 magnitude, that's one that's going to be widely felt, sometimes so surprisingly widely felt, so it definitely catches people's attention. The really good news about a 5.2 is usually we don't really have any serious damage until we get magnitude 6 and up. Now, of course, there's always the, you know, the, the unusual little things like a vase falling off a shelf on somebody's head or something or other, but basically in terms of what this means, it's not a, that large event. It's more of a wake-up call, a reminder of where we live. But at the same time we say that, we also have to say that not from scientific data, but from historical data, something like this, there's a 2% chance or so that this could be a foreshock. And obviously, that would then be a much larger concern. Yeah, and I think that's where this leads a lot of people is what does this mean? A lot of people try to equate these things together, but that's not exactly how the science of earthquakes works. Is that correct? It, you know, earthquake prediction is just one of these kind of holy grails things that we've pursued for so long, but it's so difficult. Now, this earthquake here that just happened, you're talking about about seven miles below the ground surface. We don't have the ability to see down there. And from studying the physics of the of the seismic records and things, we've not been able to find any unique indicator or something that tells us. I mean, at the same time, we have a hurricane going on in Florida. Uh, and of course, meteorologists, you all have done such a fantastic job, but you get to see things, you know, in satellites and drones and such and get information fed to you. We can't see seven miles deep. And therefore, we all we can say is we cannot predict. As I mentioned, uh, this could be a foreshock, but that's off of historic records. You look and say, how often is an earthquake of this size in this area followed by something bigger? Well, maybe 2% of the time, but that's not a direct warning. But I guess, you know, in many ways, the most important thing for an earthquake of this size is just a reminder. We now have been pushing for quite a number of years the, the best thing for most people to do during an earthquake to drop cover and hold on. You know, right now, I would I would go right underneath the dining room table. I would grab both legs and make it like a turtle shell and hang on and wait till the shaking stops. Because the real danger actually is not the earthquake, it's things falling on you. And if you can not be hit or not have something in your own house fall on you, then uh, when the shaking stops, then you can come out and check with other family members, colleagues, wherever you happen to be and and, and proceed from it there. First and most important thing, protect yourself. Don't be hit by something. A great place to stop it. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate your time today and best to you. Very good. Okay.